Learning to program seems like a daunting task for a lot of people. So many nuances to learn, so many rules to follow, but all programming languages essentially have the same structure. Variables, loops, conditional statements. So I'm going to teach you these basics of programming using a little known but easy to learn programming language called law code. Seriously. Now let me warn you, this tutorial is intended for the absolute noob. So current programmers, stop watching. Now. Okay, newbie doodles, it's just you and me now. Let's do this. What is programming? A program is a set of instructions that tell computers what to do and how to do it. These instructions can come in a variety of different forms called programming languages such as Java, Objective-C, Visual Basic, Ruby, or Python. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to be using law code because it's easiest for beginners to understand what's going on. Before we can jump in and start writing code, however, we need to have a way to convert our code from its programming language to machine language so that the computer can understand it. This is done through using something called a compiler that compiles the code from one language to another. That being said, a compiler for law code can be found here. All right, that's all the tools we need to get started, so let's rock this puppy. The first thing to do with any program is to tell it when to start and when to stop. So for law code, type hi to start and k thanks by to stop. Everything else we do will go in between these two terms. Now these terms are called syntax and essentially they're just terms or statements that perform actions whenever they're added to a program. Every programming language has its own unique syntax. For example, you can watch my HTML basics tutorial to learn HTML syntax. For the law code syntax, you can visit this web page so that you can see the syntax that we'll be using in this tutorial. Let's start our program by having it display something as an output. The term to output something from the program is called visible. So type that in followed by whatever you want to output or make visible. In this case, let's output today is catterday. Use quotes to output multiple words or phrases. Now click I can has program to run your program. But what if it's not catterday? Or what if it is Catterday? That's what we'll write our program to do, to tell us whether it's Catterday or not. Currently our program is telling us that it's Catterday whether it actually is or not. It'd be nice if there was a way to vary the output to be whatever it needs to be. This is one of the most important features of programming that you can learn. Variables are kind of like storage boxes where the contents can vary depending on what the program needs it to be. Computers read code in a linear fashion unless you tell it to do otherwise. So what we want it to read first should be at the top and we want our variable to be before our visible statement. To make a variable in law code, type i has a and then the name of your variable such as day. And now we can tell it what we want the variable to equal or what we want the contents of the box to be. So I has a day, it's today is Catterday. To show that this works, replace our statement with just the day variable and then run your program. But the day isn't always gonna be Catterday. So what we need to do is ask the user of the program for input to tell us what day it is. So basically what we need is user input. To ask for user input in law code, just type gimme. This pops up a dialog box to let the user enter in something. But before we test it, we need to create a new variable to store what the user tells us to do. So make a new variable called new day, and then type gimme new day. Before testing it out, under visible, replace day with new day. And now when you test it out, input what day of the week it is and it will output that day of the week. Okay, what should we do next? Well, Saturday is Catterday. So what we should do is take the user input and see if it equals Saturday. 
If it does, we can say today is Catter Day. If it doesn't, then we can say that it isn't Catter Day. This is called a conditional statement because the output depends on a set of conditions. So let's check to see if our user input is the same as Saturday by saying both same new day and Saturday, or really? If it is, then say yeah really and make today is Catterday visible. If it isn't, then say no way and make a different output visible. All right, there's one more concept that we should take a look at. Let's say Catterday finally arrives and you're excited. I mean, more excited than just a single statement about it. Let's say you want to loop that statement several times. So how do you create a loop in a programming environment? Well, first you start the loop like this, and then you end the loop like this. And inside of this loop, we can put whatever we want to do, which is show our Catterday statement. But if you leave it like this, it's not going to do anything because we need to tell the loop how long it should be looping and how many times it is looped already. To do this, let's first create a variable called count, and this is going to help us keep track of how many times we've looped. So what we need to do is add one to our count variable every time we make a loop. So we can say ups count one, and this will add one to our variable. Next, we need to tell it when to stop looping or else this loop will continue infinitely and freeze up your computer. Let's say that we want the loop to run five times. To do this, we can check to see if our count variable is greater than four. If it is, then we can GTFO or exit the loop. So when the loop runs once, our count variable equals one. And since one is not bigger than four, the loop continues. Next time through, the count variable equals two. Since two is still not bigger than four, it loops again. It continues this until the count variable gets to five. Then since five is bigger than four, it exits the loop. Okay, now run it and enter in Saturday and see what prints out. I know it sounds crazy, but you just learned the basics of programming using variables, conditional statements, and loops. And once you've learned these concepts, it makes it much, much easier to pick up and learn other programming languages. So go for it. Make a cool program, record it, and share it as a video response to this video. Alright, that's it for this tutorial, and until next time, hack some fun into your weekend.